Hello everybody, welcome back to another Gregorius Maths video. Today we'll be using the Feynman technique for integration to integrate a very nice integral. This is probably my favourite video so far. The integral we're going to be evaluating is the integral between 0 and infinity of e to the negative x squared times cosine of 2x dx. And what we really want is for an x to be here. Because we know how to integrate this, we know how to differentiate this, we could possibly use an integration by parts. But we don't have that x there. So we need to use the Feynman technique for integration, which is we let f of b equal to the integral between 0 and infini infinity of e to the negative x squared times cosine of not 2x but bx dx and the reason we're allowed to do this is because if you plug in 2 we get our answer so now to get our x out here we have to differentiate both sides with respect to b so let's do that f prime of b equals the integral between 0 and infinity and now we can do the differentiation under the integral sign because the bounds are not dependent on b so the partial derivative with respect to b, of e to the negative x squared times cosine of bx dx. And now e to the negative x squared is just a constant, so this equals the integral between 0 and infinity of e to the negative x squared times cosine of bx. The derivative of cosine is negative sine bx. And then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. Well, in the b world, the derivative of bx is just x. And just like that, we got our x times e to the negative x squared, like magic. So now we're ready to use the di method. Always in red, plus, minus. We're going to be differentiating sine of bx. Now in the x world, remember. And we're going to be integrating negative x times e to the negative x squared. The derivative of sine is just positive cosine of bx times, oh, I forgot to leave space, positive cosine of bx, but then times the derivative of the inside. Well, in the x world, the derivative of bx is just b. And then the integral of this using u sub, we get positive one half e to the negative x squared. And if you want, you can check this by differentiating it. Uh, but you will get that you just use a u sub. So now, uh, that uh, let's we'll stop there. Let's plug this in. Which means that f prime of b, remember, is equal to the product of the row. I mean, the product of a diagonal is part of the answer. So, sine of bx... Yeah, and then over 2, well, e to the negative x squared is just 1 over e to the positive x squared, so we can bring that to the bottom, 2e to the positive x squared. Uh, yeah, 2e to the positive, yeah. Evaluated at the bounds 0 and infinity, and then minus, because of this sign here, b over 2, because in the x world, b is just a constant, so minus b over 2 times the integral between 0 and infinity of uh, e to the negative x squared cosine of bx dx. Uh, I think yeah. dx. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so now let's deal with this first. This equals... And write this in red because you'll soon see that this will become a differential equation. And new rule, differential equations in red. So f prime of b equals, if we plug in infinity to the bottom, that just goes straight down to zero. If we plug in zero into the top, sine of zero is zero. So that also goes to zero. So zero minus b over two times well, this here is just this, or f of b. So, b over 
into times f of b. And this is not actually so bad because this is a separable differential equation. So df db equals negative b over 2 times f. Okay, and as I already said, as I already said, this is a separable differential equation. So we can multiply both sides by db and divide by f. So df over f equals negative b over 2 times db. And now we just integrate both sides. Integrate, integrate. So if we continue over here, well, of course, this is just natural log of absolute value of f. That's a simple integral. So this is natural log of absolute value of f. And plus c, but we'll put that on the other side, so let's not worry about that here. Equals negative b over 2. The, the integral of this, this is just the power rule. So it's b squared divided by 2. But because we've already got 2, 2 times 2 is 4. So we get b squared over 4, negative b squared over 4. That looks really negative b squared over 4. And then, this is important plus c1 because it's an indefinite integral that's important because we'll have to solve for this constant later so now to get the f on its own we get we do e to the power of that that and that will cancel so f equals well e to the power of this whole thing is e to the power of that times e to the power of that because we can just add the constants okay so this is e to the power of negative b squared over 4 times, well, e is a constant, c1 is a constant, e to the power of c1 is just a constant, so times c2. And now, if we refer back, this is just this, so this means if we can solve for c2, we can just plug in 2 and that's our answer. So, this means that the integral between 0 and infinity of e to the negative x squared cosine of 2x and dx equals e to the negative b squared over 4 times c2. Now, oh, oh, sorry, not 2x, bx. Yeah, okay. Okay. Well, the reality is, it was really just this cosine which was making the, dip, the integral difficult for us. So, it's really just awkward, so we can actually let b equal to 0 on both sides, which conveniently makes this e vanish too. So, this means that the integral, I'll write the rest of it so it stands out, the integral between 0 and infinity of e to the negative x squared dx equals e to the power of 0 is just 1 times c2, and for my more loyal fans, I'll, you'll recognise this interval. I did this a few days ago, but except only evaluated that the bounds negative infinity and infinity. So, this is just half of that integral. So this is equivalent to saying c2 is equal to square root of pi divided by 2. So now if we plug that in, f of b equals square root of pi over 2 times e to the negative b squared over 4. And now, refer back to the original, we need to plug in 2. So the answer is the integral between 0 and infinity. I wrote that answer to you. Okay. The answer is the integral between 0 and infinity of e to the negative x squared times cosine of 2x dx equals square root of pi over 2 times e to the negative 4 over 4, which equals, because 4 is just b squared, uh, I mean 2 squared, which equals square root of pi over well, 2, and then e to the power of negative 1, these are 4s, not lambdas or gammas, or whatever, 
Uh, okay, so 2 and then e to the negative 1 is 1 over e. Bring the e down to the bottom. Square root of pi over 2e. And now we are done. Well, that was a crazy integral. Chain rule, differential equation, Feynman technique of integration, Gaussian integral, and integration by parts, all rolled into one. And then we get this pi and we get the e in our answer. So, just a crazy integral. Hopefully you enjoyed it as much as I did, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.